Look at the mushroom. I'm just to go off on a wild tear here. Mushrooms are what are called primary decomposers, fungi, right? It means they only live off dead matter. Now, vegetarianism is held up as a spiritual ideal, but compared to the strategy of mushrooms, vegetarianism is an orgy of mass death on an appalling scale. Uh, so if perhaps the mushroom is essentially Buddhist in its approach, notice how, how non-invasive of the world of matter the mushroom is. It forms a diaphanous network through the soil as tenuous as cobwebs and yet filled with neurotransmitters. And you may remember from last year, it was discovered that the largest organisms on this planet are mushroom mycelial mats. They're, they cover acres, they weigh more than blue whales, and they're so old it's better not even to speak of it. Uh, this looks to me like this is what intelligence driven by ethical concern for life would design itself into. Say, no harm. We want to be primary decomposers. We want to be as diaphanous as cobwebs. We want to be a spore-bearing life form that can percolate through the universe. And we want to have instantaneous access time to the galactic databases. This is what the mushroom looks like. I can imagine a scenario like this. Uh, a spore-bearing life form somewhere in the universe. It does everything with the technology of DNA. And it, you see, these spores actually can survive in the environment of outer space. I mean, that's what they love. If you store spores, you store them at 220 degrees below zero in liquid nitrogen. You store them in an outer space-like environment. Well, you can imagine a spore drifting in here, inculcating itself into the environment, and then play, uh, carrying out a complete survey. And then, isn't it strange that these mushrooms were right in our paths as we left the trees and descended onto the African grassland? My book, Food of the Gods, I argued that psilocybin is what propelled us into humanness. But I didn't discuss the potential alien origin of the mushroom itself. I just said there is an X factor in human history. Something caused the human brain size to double in about a million years. No straight anthropologist or evolutionary primatologist has a clue as to what it was. And I think that psilocybin is like an enzyme for cognitive activity and that it coaxed out of us language, theater, art, religion, poetry, all of these things, and it created a kind of partnership paradise, a, a role appropriate, ba sexually balanced, gender honoring, child sensitive, nature sensitive civilization and that all fell to pieces about 15,000 years ago. And we have been on, you know, a, a death march into hell ever since. As soon as you get agriculture, you get surplus. That gives you haves and have nots and the need to beat out the brains of people who are not in your social group because they're trying to get at your grain storage. Agriculture means the end of nomadism. It means sedentary populations. It means cities. It means standing armies, male kingship, hierarchical structures, uh, law, all of the stuff that is so odious and horrible and that has led us so wrong. I mean, it may have seemed like a good idea at her, but we're the unhappy inheritors of the consequence of 6,000 years of unopposed dominator culture. And what have we got? A shattered atmosphere, toxified oceans, schizophrenic populations, and mendacious politicians. This is not what our parents raised us for, folks.